Hello and welcome to the uh, second Tomb Raider Underworld podcast. Uh, this is Keir in IDOS HQ in London, uh, and I have Eric, Rob, and Pat with me over in uh, Crystal in California. Hi guys. Hey. hey. Thanks very much for, for taking the time to do the podcast. If you just want to introduce yourself uh, to all the listeners uh, and tell them your name and, and what you do uh, on Underworld. Uh, this is Eric Lindstrom, Creative Director. Uh, this is Rob Pavey, I'm the Lead Programmer. And this is Patrick Sirk, I'm the Environment Art Director. Cool. So uh, we'll go on to our first question, <clears throat> uh, and that's, could you talk about what your main goals were for Tomb Raider Underworld and how you set about making them possible? Well, we've talked about this before. Um, the, uh, the most direct answer is we wanted to make it a hugely epic experience uh, uh, compared to what has been done in the past, but also compared to anything else that people have ever seen before. And a lot of what uh, Rob and Pat are here to talk about are the different ways that we could make that experience as, as lush and rich and epic as possible. Yeah, we, uh, we knew going in that we wanted to really take advantage of the next-gen hardware on this game. We'd, uh, we'd done some of that on the 360 version of Legend, but as we were starting a game from scratch for uh, next gen, we could take advantage of it a lot more. So that was certainly a large part of my focus, and I worked with Pat a lot on the coming up with how we would take advantage of next gen to make the game look amazing. Yeah, part of that was uh, rebuilding the engine from scratch, um, designed specifically for next-gen content. Uh, much of the content was based on location shooting around the world, uh, Southeast Asia and uh, uh, Southern Mexico. Um, we also really wanted to integrate all the next-gen um, uh, features. We, d we didn't want to emphasize one particular aspect, for example, normal mapping or specularity. We wanted to balance the whole visual presentation into a, a nice cohesive look. A common um, feature you see on games that are pushing the envelope are they find a new technology and they just uh, overuse it. When uh, the first time you get really good bump maps, suddenly all the characters have deeply eroded and lined faces, and finally we get dynamic lights, and everyone turns their lights on. And it was always important from the very beginning that the showcase was the experience and the environment, not any particular tool. So one of the things that's been really important has been to take all these tools, but to use them in subtle and interesting ways to make a rich environment, not to showcase the technology itself. How did you research the levels? Well, it's a, it's a combination of um, a lot of work up front in deciding what the locations were going to be, both from a mythological and from an experiential standpoint. And then we did a lot of research on the local mythologies, um, all of the story arc uh, intersections of the places. Uh, and then once we had that sorted, uh, it was a matter of bringing those to life. And um, Pat mentioned uh, research trips, and he can talk a little bit more about that. Our Yes, we went down to uh, the Yucatan, was our, our first location shoot. And uh, myself and Scott Anderson, another artist on the team, um, flew down with some high-end cameras and we took about 10,000 reference uh, shots around the Mayan ruins um, in Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, most of the shots were taken with the idea that we'd be creating uh, game content out of them. Um, so the, the, the photography has played a key role in really getting a quality, high fidelity look and, and a sense of believability. It, it, it's paid off um, immensely for us. And thereafter, based on the success of our first photo shoot, I flew to Southeast Asia to shoot architecture um, in that location in the jungles of uh, uh, in and around Angkor Wat. Um, and again, I came back with uh, many images that my image that my artists could uh, utilize and, and create game assets out of, and it's it's paid off immensely. Okay, and that kind of leads on to the next question, which is uh, one from the forums. So uh, this comes from uh, the big one, Sion05, Tuska, and AJRich17901. I hope I got those right. Uh, and the question is, 
What do you think is more important? Is it graphics or gameplay? Uh, and do you think the game will be visually groundbreaking? Well, two different questions, and the first one's a trick question. <laughs> Uh, that's like saying, what's more important, gasoline or wheels? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you, you need both, and that's why we keep talking about the experience, because when you listen to people talk about what they love about Tomb Raider, a lot of what they're saying is not uh, what button you press and when. It's, it's the experiential nature of what you're doing and why you're doing it. And that is a combination of interaction and graphics and audio and all those things. And uh, for anyone who uh, thinks that's a dodge on the question, one of the things that we've been saying from the very beginning is that uh, everybody has to contribute and everybody has an equal seat at the table. Graphics, audio, design, everything. So in order to make the experience as rich as possible, we really believed we could have everything be as important as each other to find the proper balance point everywhere we looked. And I think I'll add to that, that Tomb Raider, um, the environment, it's as much part of the game playing experience as, as the button pushing. You, you literally crawl on the environment, you jump over the environment. Um, so there really must be a union of, uh, of gameplay and graphics because for Tomb Raider, it, it's almost one and the same. Yeah, and go, thinking back to the start of the project, I mean, we, we devoted a lot of time to both ideas in that, you know, there were, we spent a huge amount of time brainstorming things like what could Lara do, trying to think up uh, what kind of new move ideas would fit best in the gameplay. And at the same time, we were spending a lot of time researching graphics techniques uh, to come up with our, our lighting model and our overall look we were aiming for. Okay, and uh, the next question comes from Irissa and Quasimodo, uh, and they want to know, in your opinion, what's the most exciting thing about Underworld, and are there any new, are there any new features that you're especially proud of? Um, well, I think there's certainly some gameplay features that uh, stand out. Uh, one of the the new moves we've uh, put in is uh, a greatly enhanced uh, grapple system which uh, sort of seamlessly combines the, the using the grapple to pull things around the environment and to swing on uh, things and also repelling and they can all kind of come into play at the same time which uh, has been a cool one of the coolest new abilities she has I think uh, and then in terms of look I think uh, I think our material system is something that's allowed us to do some amazing things on the art. Uh, what I think Eric mentioned in, has mentioned in the past that you know, whereas we used to have maybe one or two textures in the, on a surface on the PS2, we, now we can have you know, 11 or 12. Uh, and so the next question, uh, well the next two questions are about the uh, Wii and PS2 versions. Uh, the first comes from GT Killer uh, and he wants to know are the Wii and PS2 versions being handled by you guys at Crystal, or is it some other developers? BuzzMonkey is uh, working on those titles for us. Uh, they are being uh, closely held by uh, designers and artists within the studio, uh, but very much like Anniversary, uh, uh, the bulk of the work is being, being done by Buzz. In okay. fact, for all, all the people out there who were worrying up front that the, uh, the PS2 and the, uh, the DS versions and whatnot were going to uh, make the 360 PS3 PC effort that much less because we had to make them play nice. It's absolutely not true. Okay, and we have uh, one final question, which I think we can just about squeeze in. Uh, and this is from Paranoia Game D1011 Glitter Pause 360 Tyler and Iron Raider, uh, and they want to know: Do you intend to add realistic violence or blood in the game? Because uh, there was no blood in Legend or Anniversary. Uh, and the special deaths were missing as well. Well, we do want to keep it uh, from some of the more gruesome, height, <laughs> gruesome heights of the previous uh, incarnations, but uh, uh, it is not going to be the bloodless uh, excursion that Legend and Anniversary will or was. So that just about wraps up the second podcast of the series. So thanks very much, Eric, Rob, and Pat for taking the time to do it. 
Uh, the next podcast will be out soon and it will be based around the underworld story and the myths in Tomb Raider. Uh, so until then, thanks for listening uh, and goodbye.